This is the HP Omnibook 514, and it is easily the best budget laptop I have tried so far in 2025. This thing is only $580, but it's so good that I think it's the new default choice for a budget Windows laptop. Hi, I'm Matt, and I've been reviewing Windows laptops for the past 18 years, believe it or not, and I've reviewed thousands of them in that time. Something I've learned over all those reviews is that a lot of budget laptops are just one little step away from being e-waste. They are cheap, but they're not worth your time, never mind your money. The HP Omnibook 514, however, is, I think, an exception. It is quite a good laptop for the money. But what makes it so good? Well, it's a battery life. It's a battery life, folks, so let's talk about it. The HP Omnibook 514 hit 25 hours of battery life in a video playback test, which is pretty awesome for any laptop. Most budget Windows laptops I've tested this year range between 10 to 20 hours in the video playback test, so 25 hours is great. And real world battery life is also pretty good. I saw an estimated battery life of 16 to 22 hours and I never actually managed to run it dry. Now this is exactly what happens when I use my Apple MacBook Air with the M4 chip inside. Because the battery on that laptop lasts so long, I always end up plugging it in before it's anywhere close to zero. But what is really interesting about the battery life is the price that comes attached to it. The Omnibook 514 retails for $780 to as little as $580 on Amazon. And when it's at the lower end of its pricing, it's an absolute bargain. You'll be hard pressed to find any other laptop that delivers as much portability for that price. Now to show that off, let's consider a few other Windows laptops that are sold at a similar price. You might look at something like the Lenovo IdeaPad 5 or the IdeaPad 5 2-in-1. That is a popular option and you can get an Intel Core Ultra 7 processor and it will retail around $700. But that laptop is going to get about 12 hours in a similar battery life test, so it's not going to be nearly as portable. You might also look at something like the Dell Plus 14, and that has an AMD Ryzen AI 5 340 processor. It does last longer, but you're looking at about 15 hours of life in the video playback test, which still is not nearly as long as the HP. Now, importantly, the HP pairs the battery life with portable design too. The Omnibook 514 is about six tenths of an inch thick and weighs a couple of ounces under three pounds. And as a really nice added bonus, HP offers the laptop with a tiny 65 watt power adapter. It doesn't ship with every Omnibook 5 configuration, but it does seem to ship with most of the models sold through HP's US website. So that's something to keep an eye on. So for me, portability is really the heart of the HP Omnibook 5. It delivers great battery life at a low price. So if you want a Windows laptop with a lot of gas in the tank, the Omnibook 5 is a good pick. But you know, portability wouldn't really matter if the rest of the laptop was terrible, right? For fortunately, it's not. It's actually quite good. It checks off all the boxes. I'm really happy with how the laptop looks and feels. It's not all that stylish, but it doesn't feel at all like a budget laptop. In fact, I also happen to have an HP Elite book in to test at the same time as this Omnibook, and I was a bit shocked to find that I actually prefer for the look and feel of the Omnibook. The Elite Book is just kind of strangely chunky for the hardware inside, and I don't think that the materials look quite as nice, even though they feel durable. Now the Omnibook's display is also really outstanding. It has an OLED panel with 1920 by 1200 resolution. The keyboard and touchpad are both large and comfortable to use. The connectivity includes both USB-C and USB-A, and it even throws in an infrared camera so you can log in with Windows Hello facial recognition. That's a pretty rare feature at this price point. It's a decently quick laptop too. The model I tested had a Qualcomm Snapdragon X Plus chip, which is near the bottom of Qualcomm's product stack, but you can keep up with Intel Core Ultra 5 and AMD Ryzen 5 chips you'll find in most price competitive laptops. It doesn't skimp on memory or storage either with 16 gigabytes of RAM and a one terabyte solid state drive. A version with 32 gigabytes of memory is available too, by the way, though of course it's more expensive. In short, you're not really compromising anything here to get great battery life. I mean, it's still a budget laptop. The performance is still somewhat limited, but for the price, it is completely comparable and oftentimes better than most of the other laptops available under $750. There's only one potential issue that I want to mention, and that is that the Qualcomm chip inside, well, it runs on ARM. This is a Windows on ARM laptop. So yeah, I want to take a moment to thank this video sponsor, which is me. Uh, I just wanted to promote my book on EverQuest, the MMORPG. If you're a fan of MMORPGs or video game history in general and you want to check it out, you'll find a link in the description. And of course, uh, you know, like and subscribe if you're enjoying this video so far. Uh, that's our mandatory promotion out of the way. So uh, back to the video. Now, if you haven't heard of Windows on ARM before, here's the deal. Qualcomm Snapdragon chips use an instruction set called ARM. However, Intel and AMD chips use an x86 instruction set. And until recently, if you wanted to have a laptop CPU, Intel and AMD were really the only game in town. Because of that, Windows and all the apps that run on Windows were generally programmed for x86. Today, however, Windows 11 does 
does run natively on ARM. And so do most Microsoft applications, including Microsoft Word, Excel, Office, and etc. And Microsoft has also pulled a lot of major software companies along for the ride. So there's now ARM native Windows versions of DaVinci Resolve, Adobe Photoshop, and Blender, just the name of you. But there are gaps in the software support. For example, Autodesk Fusion 360 lacks native Windows on ARM support. Now, it can still run and actually runs decently because when apps do not have a Windows on ARM version available, they run through emulation. Game support is where things actually get pretty spotty because while the Omnibook 5 has a Qualcomm Adreno GPU that is okay for basic 3D titles, very few Windows games are optimized for the hardware, and some multiplayer games with anti-cheat software won't launch on a Windows on ARM machine at all. With that said, I think for most people, the Qualcomm Snapdragon X running on Windows 11 is a perfect fit for a budget laptop. It makes a lot of sense. Qualcomm CPUs for laptops are reportedly less expensive than Intel and AMD CPUs, and I'm sure that contributes to the Omnibook 514's low pricing. And the Snapdragon chips are power efficient, which is also part of why HP can deliver such great battery life. You see, if you do go with a laptop that has an x86 chip inside, you will definitely end up with better app compatibility. But you're also likely to end up paying a little bit more for a laptop with quite a bit less portability. And I'm not sure that's a great trade if you are looking at a laptop in this $500 to $750 price range. The main reason for this is that you're only going to be able to obtain pretty entry-level Intel and AMD chips at this price. And while they will have better app compatibility because they have the x86 instruction set, the performance of those chips is not going to be any different from the Qualcomm Snapdragon chip. And that's really going to become your limiting factor. You're going to have a lot of apps that you could potentially run, but which maybe don't run as well as you would like due to the performance level of a budget laptop. I mean, yes, you can run a game like Arc Raiders or Apex Legends on a laptop that has an AMD Ryzen 5 processor with AMD Radeon 860M integrated graphics. However, are you actually going to want to play the game on that class of hardware? I know that I wouldn't really want to if I had any other option, but that's a decision you're really going to have to make for yourself. So that is it for the HP Omnibook 514. I mean, look, this is a very, very portable machine at a very low price, and that's what it comes down to. If you can find it for that $580 that it sometimes sells for on Amazon, it is a screaming incredible deal at that price, and I highly recommend it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.